My day word today, the word that I have for today is Genesis 1. And there's a lot that we can say from Genesis 1. Titan, God made the fish. And the rat. Hallelujah. There's a few principles I would love to share with you. First of all, that you will take it. God is the creator. Amen. Amen. He created and even today, if you allow him to be who he is, in our midst, he will create in and through you. Creativity is in you. The heart of creativity, the source of creativity is living in you. He's called Jesus Christ. Amen. Allow him to create in you and through you. Verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then we see the earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. On the face of the earth. On the face of the waters. On the face of the earth. Everything. Give me an NIV or an Amplified. Anybody? Just speak it out. Verse 1. Oh, you can just say it. Yes, you can just say it from there. Go for it. One loud voice. Oh, here it is. Sorry. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the first surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Formless, empty. Formless, empty. Form and void. My question is, my brother, my sister, in our lives, in our emotions, sometimes what we go through, you can experience an emptiness, a void. Hello? How does it say? What's in over here? Emptiness, formless. And many times we don't understand what God is doing. There's no form in what is happening. Formless, emptiness. But what, what is God expecting of us? What is God waiting for? He's waiting for you to utter his word. You will utter a word, but he's waiting you for you to utter a word. What God will be doing? He created the heavens and the earth. He created you. He created you. But formless and empty life will stay until you speak forth the word. You will can speak forth a lot of other stuff. Because Holy Spirit is hovering over the waters. But enemy can be all over you. But the Holy Spirit is also there. And the Holy Spirit is waiting. Holy Spirit is waiting. Formless. Dear Makar. All confusing. What is happening? Absolutely nothing. But the Holy Spirit is waiting. You're waiting for God. God is waiting for you. God is waiting for you. Then God said. When you speak the word. My brother, my sister. It is like God is saying. When you speak the word, you say. Then it is. Then God said. Into what? Into the place of darkness into the place of void, into the place of confusion, into the place where nothing is happening, into that area of your life, your future, your finances, your relationships, your thought patterns, your ideas, your hurt, your disappointment, whatever you could go through, into that area. When you speak the word, then it is into that area, he said, then God said, let there be light. And there was light. Let there be light. And there was light. Allow God to speak into that area of your life by opening up your heart, opening up your mind, opening up your mouth, and speak what God is saying. Amen. And there will be light. Now it says there. Verse, is it verse 3? Verse 3. 
Then God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw the light, and it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. On the first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day, God is dividing. God is separating. And in your life, in the days of what you are going through, in the phases that you're going through, a lot of the first phases in your life is about separating certain things from other things. To bring clarity. To bring clarity. You trust in God that the, the crown of creation, everything, there will be breakthroughs for the crown of creation. There will be provision. The fields and the, and the animals and the this and all the provision. In the first four days, God is separating certain things from certain things. Are you with me? And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Were the first day. Interesting. That night wasn't demonic. God created the night and the day. And that night is not the darkness that's from hell. There's a darkness that's created by God. There's a darkness created by God, my brother, my sister, for you in that phase to rest in him. That after the night, the darkness that is called night, when you're going through certain stuff and you don't know what happened and certain things happened in your past in the, a year ago, two years ago, ten years ago, and it feels like you don't know where you're going. Maybe it's the time of night for you to rest in him. And maybe it's not the devil that one o'clock in the morning, the sun didn't rise. I think it was God <laughs> that decided one o'clock in the morning, the sun will not rise yet. But when I'm frustrated, I don't understand the seasons. I don't understand what God has done in my life and what is he doing. Then in the time of night when I'm supposed to be what is the word? Rejuvenalized or something like that. Rejuvenated. Not a juvenile, hey? No. Good. In the night, God wants to speak to you, but you are resting in his hand. And while you are in his hand, hello, while you are in his hand, don't be frustrated when he wants to refresh you. In that time in your life that you're going through, know the day is coming. But don't chase the night away in the name of Jesus Christ and cast it back to hell. What are you doing? This was not in the time where God said, okay, devil, I give you eight hours of the 24 hours and I will take the rest. No. God created all four, 20 all the 24 hours. Amen. So may God help you to understand seasons. May God help you how to interpret day and night in your life in a very accurate way. Because God will make sure that certain things you will not see so that you don't make a wrong decision. Are you with me? If we're pushing for 24-7, just light. You're going to be so exhausted. But if you can be at peace and in the time of waiting on God, waiting on God, little Mossy, oh, the eagle, each one of them, in that night, just to be calm, just to rest, just to be satisfied. Amen. Let his peace rule. Amen. Then God said, let there be a firmament. Moment. Fur. Moment. In the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. Let there be an expanse between the waters to separate water from water. Okay. What am I saying? That what is up there, what is down here. 
I need to understand. I'm living up there, but I'm living here. But there's super two different dimensions of what God has for me here and that what God has for me there. I'm not going to go deep into this, but the heavens will declare the glory of the Lord. Amen. Are you with me? And what is above you is not that what is dry, even though you could feel it is dry. It is like the cloud in the desert. Are you with me? It's like the cloud in the desert. It is saturated with that what is from God. Saturated with freshness, that what is over your life. It's there. God on earth as it is in heaven. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Amen? But allow the processes in this place even of prayer. When you would come to God and you're going to start to speak the word so that there will be light into that place of void, into that place of turmoil, into that place of darkness, that there will be light. Hello? That in that place you will understand a dimension of prayer, a dimension of freshness, a dimension of his glory, like the cloud that came, symbolizing his glory. Your life be saturated with his freshness, his glory, his love, his everything. Amen. But as you are up there, you must also be down here and be effective in that what God has for you. Not super spiritual, but just understanding that. Now think upon the things that's from above. Yes, that's where you start. But here it will become. Like it is there. Let it be so. In Jesus' name. Amen. Then God said, verse 9, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called sea. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth the grass, all the plants, all the trees, everything. Let it bring forth all of that. That was the, it was evening, it was morning, the third day. Just remember, like it was said in the past, the, when it started, it started with the night. It started with a waiting on God. It started with a resting in Him. It's not just, today I'm going to work hard and tonight I'm going to rest. That concept is with the seventh day, the seventh day rest. He rests from his work. But you start from a place of rest. You start from a place of being with God. You start from a place of you laying in his hand, being with him. It was night and it was day. The first. It was night and it was day. The second. It was night and it was day. Third. Okay, so the third separation Seas and earth. God is giving earth to you as a platform. My brother, my sister, to have a life with him. God wants things to happen. But he's giving you this platform in the universe. How freaky that in what we know for trillions of light years away. It's like we are the only. It looks like we are the only. Maybe, most probably not. I don't know. But God gave us this platform, earth. You have this platform to honor him. You have this platform to go with what God has for you. But start from the place, speaking the light. Speak the word, and light will come. Start from this place where you know that in the, even in the midst of the darkness, you see God using it, God using the night, and God using the day in your life. Amen. Be in that place where you understand how to be in the heavens, but how to be on earth. Seated with Christ in the heavenly places. Hello? But also understanding how he wants to walk with you here on earth. In the Garden of Eden. Where God said, here on earth, among the trees and the plants and all the stuff. Where are you, Adam? We had that on the farm a lot. Some interesting students. Where are you? On stage, we had some nice knolle. They had to plant some trees here. And when I, then one day, Pastor, I found them sleeping here at the back. So a lacquer man of two or three. Lacquer fast asleep. 
Yeah, praise the Lord. Adam, where are you? Student, where are you? You see, it's not just us checking you up. We are just looking for you. We want to walk with you. Amen. <laughs> want to walk a road with one another. Amen. Let it be so. In Jesus' name. What am I saying? Use the opportunity on earth to walk with him. Walk in the garden. Where is your garden? Here on earth. Walk with God. And the meek will inherit the earth. Die sagmoedige sal die aarde beerwe. The sagmoedige, it's the meek or the gentle. Is that so? Humble in heart. Gentle in heart. Will inherit the earth. That's the one that's teachable, flexible, open. Not first to give his opinion. Not first to speak his offense. Not first to defend. Not first to have <coughs> something in there. Ready to do something. You're frustrated with somebody, the problem is not that person. You're quickly frustrated with somebody, it's because frustration is living in you. What is in will come out. When you are satisfied with God, and you're walking with Him, and He's your life, you will not be so easily irritated with somebody. Forgive me, Emil. <laughs> ah, I'm just using him. What am I saying? Please, my brother, my sister, earth is an opportunity. Let's say earth is an opportunity. And you better find out what's the opportunity that God is giving you on earth because you're a unique person, one out of billions of billions of billions of people. And there's one specific, one in a billion. It's such a Christian song, eh? And... Uh, what is your opportunity that God is giving you where nobody out of billions has the same opportunity as you? Just like your fingerprint. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Earth is an opportunity that you will never ever get for the next trillion years laying ahead of you. So tomorrow, as scripture says, when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts. Like scripture says, today, Tomorrow, next year, now, as you hear his voice, now, don't harden your hearts. As you hear his voice, not my voice. If you're a child of God, you're sensitive in the spirit. You will hear his voice right now. But it's your choice. It's your choice. Right now, to learn how to, like we said, to hear the word, the word of God and how to ignore it. As you sit here and you hear the word and you decide, I will think upon other things. I'm busy with other things. You're teaching yourself when you hear the word how to ignore it. How not to respect it. How the word must not have an impact on you. That's also when you alone. Is it a bit, mate? Even when you're alone with the word. May God help you. May the Holy Spirit arrest you. That this word, then God said, let there, then God said, then God said, the word there, then God said, then this happened. And we move to the next day. When are you moving then to the next day? Is your limit, mate? May God help you to move to the next day, move to the next day, so that you can come into the place, the seventh day, the Sabbath rest where Christ is your Sabbath rest, where Christ is your life, where from the place of rest, your Sabbath rest, Jesus Christ, from that place, you can be with God and you can enjoy life from that place because he did the work. He did the work. One, two, three, four, five, six days. And he is doing the work. You're going just with him and doing with him because he wants you to do with him. He wants you to do life with him. Amen? Not just sort out the issues and the stuff and the this, but if I keep it, and, and it's the whole time this thing, pulling, and I give it back and I take it, and I give it. That's not the life God has for you. Then with this facet, I'm hiding behind the trees. and With that facet, I'm walking with God. No, man. There will always be things that we must work on. But God doesn't come like a demon of, with con of condemnation into my life. No. Yes, Holy Spirit will 
oortuig van sonde, he will convict of sin. He will bring me into the place to be real. But he will not leave me in that place. Because for you to be real about what you feel, that's good. But you, that will not be your God. You are real so that in humility you will change. Are you with me? You have the opportunity to be real so that you can change into what God has for you. So, God separated and said, this is for you, for you, for opportunity. And how does he keep all these trillions of liters of water exactly in his place? That there is the line. There is the line. And when the sea is there, that level, just two meters higher, guys, they start to build big city stories of buildings. Because God decided, this is the separating line. See, you will stay there, and there will be the platform of opportunity for my children, for the nations. So it will be. So God is drawing a line, my brother, my sister. And if you can allow him to draw the line in your life, this is opportunity that I understand from God. And this, in the name of Jesus Christ, God said, you will stay here. No tsunami from the sea will come and destroy my life. Amen? Let it be so. It will not happen. God has drawn the line. Stay with that line. Speak forth the line. Tell the enemy, God has drawn the line. You cannot come close. You cannot come and destroy my life. You cannot cause some other action there in the sea and bring a tsunami here. Sorry. The line has been drawn. Are you with me? Next time you think about the sea, remember the line that God has drawn. This side is called opportunity. Earth is called opportunity. Amen. Then, where are we now? Verse 14. Then God said, let there be lights okay in the heaven to divide, divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. Sun, moon, planets, stars. Everything. Everything coming into a place of order. Into a place of order. If it's full moon and you want to do some stuff in the night, it's good and it's amazing. But you think it's supposed to be day. And there's no moon. A little bit of stars. No sun. Your life, there's such a lot of frustration because you don't understand the seasons that God has for you. Yes, this vision is from God. But your timing. Now you have this precious vision. You have this, what you must carry. But you're going through a lot of stumbling blocks. A lot of shaky ground. Up here the, on the, to the mountain or down. And what? Pitch dark. Phew. Oh, I surrender everything to the Lord. Boom. I fall. And I thought, start over again. Oh, the enemy is against me. And I stand in the name of Jesus Christ against the enemy. What are you doing? You're supposed to walk with that what God has given you. Tomorrow morning, nine o'clock. Well, you just walk. You can see where, what, what, when, how. Hello? But don't understand the seasons, what God has created. Where it marks the day, it marks the night, with the moon, with the stars, hello, with the planets, hello, with the sun. May God give you the grace. God said, let there be. Let there be the right season over your life. Let there be the wife. Boom. The right season. Or the devil says, let there be a woman now in the name of hell. Not a woman from hell. I'm... Are you with me? Like we said, me and Jeline, if we got married 10 years before the time, 
One would be in heaven, the other one in jail. There's a season and a time. She is from the Lord. And I believe I'm from the Lord in her life. But it could have looked like we are from the devil in one another's lives if we got married in the wrong season. Are you with me? <laughs> okay, so all I'm saying with that, my brother, my sister, speak the seasons into your life. Don't just speak what God wants to do. Don't just speak the promises. Don't just speak Canaan. Don't just speak all the things that God has said. Speak. Thank you, Lord. I will know the season. Thank you, Lord, that I will enjoy the season. I will enjoy when it's winter. I will enjoy when it's evening. I will enjoy when it's in the middle of the night. I will enjoy when it's morning. But help me to understand and to enjoy the seasons. Because you can be so tired after a week or two or three or four. And you cannot really say that you did this work in the past. Some of what you did now gave you a lot of energy. Now you are just drained and you've worked too hard. You've done the... Or maybe you just... You're not working with the seasons that God has for you. Are you with me? I'm not talking when you are... When you are fed up. And then you say, no, the season is, has passed. And you go into the next season without the guidance of the Spirit. But in the name of this flesh of fed upness. What on earth are you going to destroy in that season? And that's once again what you have inside of you that you can totally destroy. At that stage, that what is there is not supposed to be exposed to sunlight. Are you with me? And you put that sunlight there for the others. It's the time. And it's just coming. It's blossoming. It's opening up. And the morning is opening up. But for you, that same sun is crushing. What is also from God, but you had to allow God's wisdom. And you need to speak the right seasons. Then God said, then God said, then, this time, this will happen with you. That I have for you then. That I will have for you in 10 years' time. That I will have then. You need to understand the seasons. You're with me because there will be certain success in your life also. Make sure you understand it correctly. Okay? Time wise. Then what happened? Next day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creatures. All kinds of cattle, creeping things, beasts, beasts of the earth, curin, and no, not the beast. Oh, am I calling the beast? Okay. What am I saying? Well, the animals before that. Oh, sorry, man. Was the birds and the the fish, the birds and the fish. What is God saying? There must be, there must be things must happen. If I can say like that, things need to happen in the heavenlies. It's not like there's nothing in here. Yes, you must have ideas, but it must be from God. It must be from God. Think what is from above. Are you with me? But with that, what is deep in you? Deep calls unto deep. From the depths of the sea, there's, from the depths of who you are, there's, a, there's coming forth. Now, if you walk in the flesh, there's from the depths of a flesh heart or from rubbish, it's coming forth and it cannot stay inside. It must just burn, vomit it out. Because something will stir here. God created it in that principle. So that in, from the depths of your heart, certain things will happen. But let it be beautiful. Let it be what God created. Then God said, there will be quality from the depths of your heart. Then God said, you will understand how to think that what is from above. Are you with me? And you will see in creation through that what was created in the sea. From that what is created for up there. And from that 
what he's created around you. All animals. Romans 1 says God's principles can clearly, clearly, clearly be seen in creation. Are you with me? So you can have your fight with ostrich. It's okay. And you go and sit on the cliff like an ostrich. And you jump down there because you must understand how to fly and soar like an eagle. And you confess it and you speak it that you understand how to soar like an eagle, but you're an ostrich. Your neck big fair it was the Okay. So what am I saying? You need to know who you are, your uniqueness in Christ. And go according to that. That eagle that sits there and he just knows to stretch out there and there he goes. Because he understands if an eagle can understand the wind in such a way, how much more me and you supposed to understand from our spirit what God is doing. So that from our spirit, we tell our soul just to stretch out the wings. And there we go. Because in my spirit, I could sense the wind. I could sense when the strength from the right angle, from the right, in the right way. From my spirit, I can... I, identify the storm and how the storm will work for me where the eagle go above the storm and the storm works for the eagle how the storms in life will work for you if you can understand from your spirit but you will jump into the storm and you try and fight with whoever in the storm and even worse if the storm is inside of you Then with your spirit, go above the storm in your soul. With your spirit, you are spirit. You are not the soul. With your spirit, who you are, go above the storm in your soul. Storm in your heart. Storm in the negativity. Storm in the what? Depression. Whatever you feel. Go with your spirit above it. Amen. And soar above the storm in your emotions. The hurt in your soul. Soar above it like an eagle. What did once we say? Mossy, the mossy. What's a mossy in English? Sparrow. You talk a sparrow is a swalky. What's a swalky? Swallow. Okay, whatever. Those birds. There's no sparrow stress clinic. Why? You can see in principle. In the principle. You know, when God just sat there, there will be sparrow. He was there. And he's not stressing about tomorrow. But with you, he didn't just say. He took with his hands the man, and he created you. And with his breath. He said, first of all, let us make man in our image. But this is not just going to be about speaking. This is even so much more above speaking. Hello? This is how we will get practically involved. So God says, let us get practically involved with Patrick. Let us get practically involved with Helen. You with me? Because what we're going to create now is above everything that we've created. It's going to be beautiful. But that's you. That's you. My brother, my sister, I want to say it's like God getting his hands dirty with the mud, not with sin, but putting everything in and then breathe from himself because God is spirit. He's blue, he brew, oh, he blew from himself into you. Are you with me? Let it be so for you in Jesus' name. Then God said, let us make man. You alone are not just made in the image of God. It's a us thing. If you want to portray the image of God, it is with brothers and sisters together. It's a us. Father, Son, Holy Spirit said, let us make man. Father, Son, Holy Spirit they didn't say, let us make man in the image of the Son. 
Let us make man in the image of the Father. No, he said, let us make man in our image. Our image together. When they will they see that you are his disciple? When they see how you love your sister, your brother. How you respond to others. How you forgive. How through the blood you come into a life that, was, that is accurate. Because through the blood, it's not so that I will be cleansed from the rubbish and the sin. Now I'm not walking in sin through the blood. No. Through the blood is so that I can come to the original mandate, to the original dream. To deal with the sin is not, that's not the goal. That's not the end goal. The end goal is so that you can live according to the pattern that God has set for you. That you will, with pure love, with clean love, not with motives, ulterior motives, whatever. Live with people around you. Wife, kids, parents, brother, sister, friends, not so friends. With all of them. Why? Through the blood, that is the reason for you to do that. So that you will live in the image of Father, Son, Holy Spirit that created you for that purpose. He created you in a family context. The family said, let us create man in our image, in our family image. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. My brother, my sister, you need to take that today, please. Please, you need to take that today. So that you can come into the place to walk as the crown of creation with authority. Let us make man in our image. And for let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. I think one of those creeping things will, actually was the snake. <sighs> What sounds from a car? For you to walk with authority, that is godly. That is when you walk in his image. But you will not walk and you cannot walk with authority if you don't walk in the context of the family. But if you can walk in the context of the family, then you have authority. Yo, as an individual, yes, there's a lot you can get right. Yes, but so much, so much, so much, so much more. You will slay your thousand. One will slay a thousand. Two will slay two thousand. No, ten. Slay your thousand. Have your testimony about the thousand, the thousand, the thousand, the thousand. Let's plus, 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 all the thousands. And you're going full out. But not living in the image of God in the context of family. But... If it's not each one on its own, and a thousand, when you get to the next one, you add what? An O. You add an O. Hey. From a thousand to ten thousand. Ten thousand. Plus the next one. Add another note. Add another note. Add another note. Add another note. Hello. To slay the enemy with authority because we're starting to walk in the image of God. And the image of God is a family image. And if we understand, then God comes and says, where two or more agree, come to pass. Where two or more are gathered in my name, I will be there. You, because you are the eye, you cannot say you don't need the ear. You, because you are the feet, say, I'm nothing. Because I'm not the teeth. Are you with me? Then he explains the body. He explains how everything's supposed to function together. How we're supposed to need one another. How we need to carry one another's burdens. How to love one another. There's no loving of yourself if you cannot love your brother. We say, yes, I cannot love him with God's love if I don't love myself. But the other way around, it's also true. If you're struggling to love people unconditionally, it means you have an issue with yourself. You have an issue with yourself. So go and get into the place so that you can find your life to be precious. So that you can find 
why God is loving you, that you don't argue with his love for you. Now, if he loves you, how dare you not love yourself? Or you, are you disagreeing with God? Are you with me? So if you have respect for his love, love yourself. And that means you become whole. You become whole. In the midst of people hurting you, in the midst of people disappointing you, in the midst of people doing what against you? They cannot touch it. Because his love compels you. Because his love is light. And darkness cannot touch the light. Amen. Are you with me? Come, let's come in, get into that place. Let's get into that place. Because if we will walk in the image of God, what the enemy sees is the image of God. It is as if seeing God. And then he must run. Because the God, darkness cannot fight against the light. Because the light overcomes the darkness. Because Jesus became sin. And from that place, Holy Spirit came and raised him from the dead. And if the Spirit of God that raised Christ from the dead is living in you, how much more, how much more will he not raise up your mortal bodies to serve God accurately? Where your body sees it as an honor to serve the true and living God. Let's say what we said long ago. The Spirit in me raised Christ from the dead. Remember that. And respect Him. Respect what the One has done in you. Respect what the One inside of you has done to Jesus in the grave. Let's say, I will respect the Spirit in me. In what He has done. To the Son of God in the grave. Amen. Respect Him in what He has done. Don't ignore Him. And see if you don't have faith this morning or this afternoon you feel discouraged about certain things in your life. Focus on that and see what He has done. See what He has done in the grave. And then think again. What he is going to do for you, in you, and through you. Let it be so. We are his family. And God said, I want to, we want to come and live among you. If you love me, we will come. But we will come to who? We will dwell among you. And the new Jerusalem and the new Mount Zion, and Mount Zion with the new Jerusalem, the city of the Lord that will come down on Mount Zion. Remember, Mount Zion is the platform where God will be praised and he and he alone. Definition of Mount Zion, where you need to stay, where you need supposed to live, is the place where he and he alone is honored. And from that place, God says, that's where I bring my city that I dreamt about. So much more than just heaven. That God dreamt about. My ultimate, ultimate dream will come down from heaven. The new Jerusalem. The habitation of peace. Where it will be me and you. And God will dwell among us. We are the new Jerusalem. We are what Abram looked for. Remember? Abram looked for and he couldn't find the Canaan that he looked for. Because he was looking for a city whose builder and architect is the Lord, says scripture. And he is seeing it now, how God is building a city whose builder architect is the Lord, Jesus, the builder of his church. Building you and me. Let's allow him to do that. Because he's building for his father a home. Our father's home. That's the ultimate dream from our father. God, come and do this in our lives, Lord. Please, Lord. God, we don't understand how you desired to live among us more than heaven. But, Father, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your enablement, Lord, that you're giving us. God, forgive us where 
in areas of our lives we didn't live according to the image that you've created us in. In your image, in your likeness. Change us, Lord. Change us, Lord, so that when the enemy look at us, they will, the enemy will see you. When demons look at us, they will see you. Help us in that way, Lord. God, but I need my brother, I need my sister. I need people to mentor me. I need to mentor others so that I can be built in as a living stone in the spiritual house there where you've placed me. Not just here, God, but there where I'm working, there where I'm living, there with, with a family out there. Teach me, help me, show me, Lord. It must be your home. It must be your home, Lord. Not for my emotions, first of all, to feel at home. Not for my thought patterns to feel at home. Every thought pattern, every idea, every dream, every thing, Lord, that is not from you. Help me to deal with that through your spirit. Your Holy Spirit's fire to burn away everything that's not from you. So that you will be so welcome in our lives. We trust you for that, Father, that you will come and do that. In Jesus' name, amen.